Many famous scientists and travelers of the past were amazed with beautiful landscapes of high mountain Lake Markakul. Przewalski, Patanin, Kozlov, Sapozhnikov and many others described this unique wild corner in their works. In the late 19th century, in the magazine Nature and Hunting, an essay by well-known writer Yablonsky was published. In this essay, he wrote about the lake the following. I would give a lot. I would sacrifice a lot in my life to be able to return to this lake and settle there down for the rest of my life. There has been no other place that could be compared in its beauty in my traveling experience, and I have traveled a lot in my life. Markakul is the largest lake in Altai. It is 38 kilometers long and its square accounts for 455 square kilometers. Its maximum depth is 25 meters. 95 rivers and creeks flow into the lake and only one river flows from it, the river Kaljir. The lake's altitude is 1,449 meters according to the Baltic system. The northern edge of the lake lies along the Kuchum Ridge. The Azutau in the south and in the east its coast meets the Sarvenok Ridge. The northern shore is the foot of Mount Aksubas that is 3,304 meters high above sea level. Markakul is situated in the geographical center of the Asian continent on the border of climatic zones. The continental part of Western Siberia and the sharply continental part of Mongolia as well as the part of the modern climate of Central Asian deserts and steppes. According to the famous zoogeographical law, on the border of the landscape zones, the biological diversity is particularly abundant. Scientists know 160 kinds of water animals and other forms of life. Foresters have discovered 19 types of trees in the woods. Zoologists have found 55 types of mammal species and 200 species of birds. Birds of prey such as the Eurasian eagle owl, the Eurasian scops owl, long-eared and short-eared owls, probably the forest owlet and the Ural owl dwell in this area. The lake is also a home for other rare birds like the golden eagle, the white-tailed eagle, the eagle owl and the grey crane. The southwest shore is sometimes inhabited by the Altai snowcock. The lake itself is inhabited by four kinds of fish, endemic at the subspecies level. The Lenok fish symbolizes the whole era in the history of Markakul. This fish has become an emblem of the lake. Thanks to the abundance of this fish, the lake started to be populated with fish species. The fauna of mammal species in the national park is diverse. It includes 55 kinds of animals, which comprised of almost one-fifth of the fauna of all terrestrial mammals of the former USSR. Among insectivores, there is the Altai mole. It dwells meadows and clearings. The Eurasian water shrew inhabits the local rivers and creeks, and there are also six kinds of nocturnal species, shrews. Among predators, there are brown bears, minks, wolverine, stoat, weasel, steppe polecat and badger. In the estuaries of the rivers, flowing into the lake, there are small colonies of otter. Populations of these cute animals, that used to be nearly extinct in the past, are now increasing. These animals can be found even near villages now. The snow leopard has been noticed for several times near and within the Markakul Basin. The red deer and roe deer are typical hoofed species in the local woods. To the northwest from the Markakul Basin, on the slopes of the southern Altai ridges, sports hunting is allowed. In the past, people used to live by the lake. Now numerous petroglyphs drawings carved in stone found near the lake are the evidence of that near the river Kalshev. Samashev's group of archaeologists found ancient burials that date back to the Saks epoch, the 9th century AD to the 3rd century BC. In the 17th century and until the mid-18th century, the lands around the lake were occupied by the tribes of Rungas. When they left the area, it was populated by the Kazakhs again, who used the land for grazing their livestock. The word Marka means a six-month-old lamb. From the 18th century, every summer, the lake was a popular fishing site for Russian peasants from Bukhtarma, who were mostly believers of the old faith and those escaped from mining factories. They were called Bergals. 
In the early 19th century, the area was occupied by peasants from new reformed villages of the Bukdarma region. The former territory of China, in 1881, Markakov officially joined Russia according to the St. Petersburg Decree. At the beginning of the 20th century, on the shore of the lake, the first settler from the Tomsk province, Fro Mikhailovich Minaev, built a wooden house and became the resident of the new place. Soon new settlements were built here, Urunhaika, the Upper and the Lower Yelovka, Babrovka and others. In 1976, the lake and the neighboring territory received the status of a sanctuary. Initially, its area accounted for 71 hectares. In 2007, the government of Kazakhstan extended its territory to 102,000 hectares. The sanctuary was created to save the unique ecosystems of the lake and the areas of the southern Altai taiga. Since the year it was founded, the populations of elk, red deer, roe deer, brown bear, wild boar, wolverine, sable and otter have increased significantly. The sable, which became nearly extinct in the 19th century, is now found everywhere here. Today, the administration of the national park is based in the Uranhaika village. The name of the village originates from the Kalmyk tribe Urunhai that used to graze their livestock here in the summertime. The historical records about those tribes are limited to a few articles in magazines in Russia before the revolution. The people of Urunhai were known for the exceptional horses they bred that were capable of going up the hill in the local mountains. The people were also good hunters. The writer Pravduhin who traveled around southern Altai, wrote about people who remembered that ancient tribe. The coldest area in the East Kazakhstan region is in the area near the lake in the settlement of Arlovka. Here, the annual temperature difference accounts for 100 degrees centigrade. The residents of the Urunhaika settlement can predict what the weather will be on the following day by looking at Mount Samovarkan. If the peak of the mount is covered with clouds, they know it will rain. Regarding tourism, we have beautiful landscapes and diverse wildlife. We have a lot of visitors, both internal tourists and visitors from outside Kazakhstan. We've had quite a lot of tourists from Russia and Europe. Today, ecotourism plays an important role in the region of remote villages. Community leader Ailita Ahmed Salim Kazin, in cooperation with local communities, develops the new field of economy successfully. Local people help visitors in guiding and accommodating them. They also provide boarding to the tourists. The region dwellers are provided with jobs and this motivates them to care for the environment and nature. In our rivers, we have fishes like Uskuch and Harius. Fishermen are allowed to catch fish for a limited amount, of course. We also have Taimen. This fish is in the Red Book of Endangered Species. It is prohibited to fish for it all year round. In the lake itself, it is allowed to fish up to 5 kilos of fish, and only for the local people who have licenses. Visitors are allowed to catch fish, but they must let it go then, within the law, of course. In the east, the Markakul Basin borders southern Altai, that separates Kazakhstan from Russia. The eastern part of the ridge is situated on the Russian territory, in the Republic of Mountain Altai. The border separates the Kazakhstani part of Altai from the southern edge of the Ukok Highlands. The ridge starts at the Taban Boglo-Ula Massif, on the territory of Mongolia. The slopes of southern Altai have five different floral zones. The meadow steppe, the mountain taiga, the subalpine, the high mountain and the needle one. The meadow steppe belt is situated at the altitude of 1450 to 1600 above sea level and is represented with meadows of different seeds and grains. The mountain taiga belt consists of light coniferous forest. The predominant tree species here is the Siberian larch. In the river valleys, there are fir tree woods of fir and Siberian fir trees. The subalpine belt is represented with high mountain subalpine meadows. 
The high mountain includes the zones of alpine meadows and the mountain tundra. Up above the Nivel belt is a kingdom of glaciers and snow that never melts. Experts know more than 180 glaciers. The Markakol Basin attracts scientists too. On the shores of the lake, research is being held, including environmental one, and the one about the factors that have a negative impact on the local flora and fauna. In the scientist's spotlight are ideas about how we can benefit from nature without causing a negative impact on the environment. In the estuary of the river Tapalovka is based a mobile scientific base camp of the Institute of Hydrobiology and Ecology managed by director of the institute Mirgalia Sengalievich by Mukanov. <laughs> Markakul is beautiful indeed, but deep down it has some environmental problems. One of them is a declining amount of fish that is a symbol of this lake, the Lenok fish. Mirgali Singalievich agrees that in the zone of recreation we need to get into the habit of using safe methods of using natural resources that will motivate local people to care for nature, but the ethical principles should be applied at all times. Sanctuaries have been created as models of what wild nature should be like and commercial interests should never have an impact on natural processes. Lake Makakul is part of a sanctuary and amateur fishing is prohibited here. Only local people are allowed to fish here, that is people who live in close proximity to the lake to satisfy their needs. According to long-term research, over the past 10 years, the amount of fish in Markaku has declined almost twice. That's why we need to make conscious attempts to direct them to renewing these natural resources so that fish spawning takes place in a sufficient way. The dramatically increasing populations of cormorants near the lake is a hotly debated issue. Lake Markakul is being populated with birds of prey that feed on fish. Their number is increasing from year to year, and they are cormorants. Ten years ago, cormorants did not inhabit Lake Markakul. Mirgalia Sengalievich says that the increasing number of cormorants in the lake is related to the decline in the amount of fish in Lake Zaisan and in Lake Buhtarma. The wood areas that are occupied by cormorants can be seen from a distance. The woods are dying of their toxic waste. We can say that cormorants are perceivers birds. The effect of their presence here undoubtedly has an impact on the amount of lake fish. But we don't have grounded evidence of that. We need to study that, to find out how negative is the presence of cormorants for the lake fish. Scientists are against exterminating cormorants as the sanctuary laws shouldn't be violated. The cormorant's diet hasn't been studied thoroughly yet. Perhaps they feed on roaches and minnow, not on uskuch. In any case, measures should be taken only after thorough research. Thanks to its inaccessible location, the Markakul Basin has saved its most ecosystems. In the age of fast urbanization, Intact wild corners like Lake Markakul are particularly precious. If natural resources are used pragmatically under the right management, they may bring good profit and satisfy the local population's essential needs without any damage to the environment. <laughs>